Let's call the meeting to order for the Common Council for the City of Hudson for Monday, March 30th. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, the roll. Mayor Birchall. Here. District 1, Morissette. Here. District 2, Yakub Rod. Here. District 3, McCormick. Here. District 4, Weber. Here. District 5, Hoggett. Here. District 6, Banslow. Here. At this point uh, in the meeting, we call for anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the council on any issue that's not on the agenda. So now is your time. Is there anyone here? Mr. Shaw, if you could come up and state your name and address, please. My name is Marianne Shaw, 493 Country View Road. I'm from the town of Hudson. I appreciate the opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, a couple things that I just w would like to talk about. One is, I'm sure everybody knows, uh, the library is in search of a new library director. So any assistance, anybody that uh, can put their feelers out for that, we'd appreciate it. Linda Donaldson has done a fantastic job. Uh, all the time I've been on the library board, um, it's just been fantastic. It's been hassle-free. Uh, she takes care of really every type of business that comes before her, and it would be just awesome if we can get a, a replacement for Linda uh, to fill those kinds of shoes because it's, it's not easy to do. So that's one. And then number two is uh, also pertaining to the library. And I, I'd like to bring it to this council's attention. The reason why I'm here tonight is uh, there's been some talk and banter about uh, the library, library funding, et cetera. And really what I'd like to do is let all the citizens, all the taxpayers know what a great job the joint members are doing, especially the town of Hudson, city of Hudson, uh, as it pertains to funding the library. Uh, it's a joint library agreement. Everybody's uh, upholding their portion of the agreement. That's not an issue, but uh, you've gone above and, and overboard in the fact that you've brought additional funding to the library, and we really appreciate it. And that additional funding has allowed us to operate in the black for the first time last year. And so we just uh, really want to, or at least I want to thank you uh, for doing a great job of supporting the library in its, in its current form and uh, look forward to a uh, new library director and uh, some future years of some decent library operation. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Madam uh, Clerk, the, uh, the uh, consent agenda items, please. To approve the regular meeting minutes of March 9th, 2015 and the special session and closed session meeting minutes of March 16th, 2015. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $506,691.75. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. Contingent on the payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city and approval by the police department, approve the issuance of eight regular operator's licenses for the period March 31, 2015 through June 30th, 2016, and one temporary operator's license to be used at the Booster Days event on July 2nd through 4th, 2015. Additional operator license application information is available in the clerk's office on request. To approve the six-month Class B beer license for the Hudson Softball Association LLC to sell beer at the Grandview Park concession stand for the license period May 1st, 2015 to November 1st. Can we pull that one off? Would someone? Pull that, please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. To approve the special event permit for the Gopher to Badger race from Mark Bonger's final stretch on August 7th through 8th, 2015, and allow the start time of the event to begin at 4.30 a.m., contingent on the approval of the certificate of insurance by the city attorney, payment of the organizer for any charges to hire police officers or any extra public works or park staff, and that the signage will be picked up at the completion of the event. To approve the final stretch triathlon on September 5th, 2015, beginning and ending at Lakefront Park. To approve the Riverfront Run 5K, 10K, and One Mile Fun Run on Saturday, September 12th, 2015, at 7.45 a.m., beginning and ending at Riverfront Athletic Club. To approve the MS Walk on Saturday, May 2nd, 2015, beginning and ending at the Hudson Middle School. 
to approve the Class B beer and Class C wine license application for the Hudson, Boost, Hudson Boosters Incorporated for July 2nd through 4th, 2015, including the fenced area as proposed. To approve the authorization for a budgetary transfer from the contingency fund to the First Street Building Service Repair Buildings account in the amount of $18,000 to cover the cost for the replacement of the automatic transfer switch for the emergency generator at the First Street Building. To approve the conditional use permit for a seasonal temporary garden center from April 15th to July 10th, 2015 at the south parking lot of Plaza 941701 Ward Avenue <coughs> as proposed by Plant Place Incorporated for a 64 foot by 154 foot area including a 20 foot by 72 foot greenhouse and an eight foot by 12 foot shed with the condition that the signage be approved by the community development director and a review in February or March 2016 if they desire to continue the business in 2016. To approve filling the open patrol officer position with a candidate from the current eligibility list. <coughs> to place on file the monthly report of the finance officer, the public utility commission meeting minutes of March 10th, 2015 and the EMS commission meeting minutes of March 24th, 2015. That is all. Move to approve. Second. Roll call. Yaku Brad? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Weber? Yes. <coughs> Anslow? Yes. Morset? Yes. Okay, the uh, Booster Club beer license uh, was pulled. I think we'll go back to that right now. That's okay. I think uh, a lot of you were here for the meeting when we talked about referring to it. Back to the no, no, it didn't get referred back. We softball association. softball association, yeah, not the booster. Um, so everyone was here for that discussion, I think, um, and the vote was two two in finance whether or not to approve the seven to drop to six percent from eight percent for the Hudson Softball Association. So anybody want to? I'm just going to reiterate. It. Okay, does it? Does anybody have any? Go ahead then. But Tom, do you want to come up? Mm. Okay. The li well, well, the liquor license, we, we should resolve the other li issue before we issue a liquor license. That, I guess that's my point. And we've already approved the, uh, we, pulled, we pulled the beer license, correct? Yeah. The discussion for the con 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 concession session is not as on finance still. Is on, still to be discussed below. So we want to wait and do the beer license with that discussion then. But so aren't we, I mean, you're, if it's still 8%, you're still going to do the league, right? I mean, you're no, just but not we're not gonna, talking if we're discussing This is for the liquor license, though. Right? I'm asking if it should be done. I think Devin's point is, should it be done under the finance committee stuff when we have the discussion of the pos for the concession? Okay, because it's on the finance committee. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that okay? The beer and wine license was contingent on signed concession agreement. Correct. So. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So then, I, but I did have it pulled off. So, so if you want to pass that with a signed sealed uh, concession agreement, then it's okay. But I don't want to, are, that was the uh, minutes of the, well, of our finance committee? Actually, it didn't happen because we pulled it. So, right. yeah, now we need a motion okay. if you want to that's approve that. To that's, yep. that's what I was saying. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll discuss it then. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Is that okay with everyone? All right. Good. Sounds Discussion, good. possible action on the application to amend the conditional use permit for Heritage Greens planned residential development to change land use designations for an area 3.81 acres located south and east of Heritage Boulevard from commercial and flex uses per the conditional use permit amended dated July 21st, 2008 to one family residential, 13 single family lots, Creative Homes, Inc. Mr. Darnold. And back in 2008, the city of Hudson went through a rather rigorous uh, process of amending the Heritage Greens planned residential uh, development conditional use permit to allow uh, permitted uses which included both commercial and multiple family, uh, senior housing. Uh, Creative Homes is uh, requesting to change uh, 3.881 acres of that area to one family residential. Uh, and the Planning Commission is recommending approval of that, plus the amendment to the 
um, City of Hudson comprehensive plan to change it from a neighborhood commercial to a single one and two family um, residential. Uh, that would require a public hearing. So if uh, in general the conditional use permits approved, then we go ahead and schedule uh, the public hearing uh, for the uh, for the uh, comprehensive plan amendment. If there's opposition or denial of the conditional use permit uh, by the common council, there's no sense of amending the uh, comprehensive plan. Questions for Mr. Darnell? Move for approval to re a move to approve uh, the request to amend a conditional use permit for Heritage Greens. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Okay. Yeah, and if I just sure. briefly explain, the long list of addendums is to make sure that somebody else that may come in wanting to develop this property or other properties that had, were affected by the 2008 amendment uh, are informed as to what the requirements are. So there were changes from the requirements from the 2008 to now because of this amendment. So we want to try to be as clear as we possibly can what those uh, conditions uh, are of the of the conditional use permit. And with the scheduling of the public hearing, we'd schedule that as quickly as possible. If I can have some discretion of working out the date yep. in, in conjunction of common council meetings. Any questions for Danny? Oh, it sounds good. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Denny. Um, uh, discussion possible action request from the fire uh, department to reallocate funds from the 2000 fire department budget to increase uh, inspection services. Mr. Uh, Welly, you're on. You're on the f fire inspections. <laughs> Welly. Sorry, I thought you said well. I must was here. Um, the fire chief has requested that we um, transfer money from his the firefighter wages salaries. Um, last year he did not use all of it, and he had a fairly sizable surplus. He's asking that the money be transferred to allow him to have additional building inspections completed, so that he can certify the report to the state to get our fire dues. And okay. finance committee said. They would recommend it through the end of the year, and then they'd reassess whether we need to have some type of staff position for that. I did mention at finance, I told Scott, if for some reason the fire calls do go back up, he'd have to find the money somewhere else within his budget. But Mr. Weber, do you have anything to add on this? Because you're, you're a rep on the fire board, correct? Yes. Well, I, I think the, the issue is that uh, we, we are behind on inspections, and we didn't really know how what the total situation was until we totally updated the records and put it into a, a tracking system that we could follow. And um, that the village of North Hudson and the town of Troy are in compliance, but, or we are in compliance with our inspections there, but not in the town of Hudson or the city of Hudson. Okay. So we have a, a serious deficit and they are auditing records this year. And if they, we don't come into compliance, we uh, stand to lose about a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. You think uh, that this will solve the problem? I think it's, uh, you know, we've been talking about a fire station and a new location. This seems like a issue that needs to go to the front burner, and some of that other stuff needs to kind of wait a little bit and get this done first. But do you think uh, this particular is a solution? I guess he's, Scott's not here, so it's not really fair for for me to ask you that question, but. Again, if we do this, I think we need to make sure that this is going to fix it. And do you feel, well, that's not fair to him. It's, it's going to, I mean, from our discussions, yep. yeah, you know, we sh with what he's proposed here, we'll be able to clean ourselves up this year okay. and, and be in compliance by the end of the year. Now, what we do, yep. we, we should learn a lot from this process. Yep. So how we manage it from here on out okay. will be, uh, that hopefully it's going to come out of there. Because he's got a, these people, even though they're, they're our, accredited and been trained, they really haven't done the hands-on, enough hands-on to be uh, as effective as they will be by the end of the year. Okay. So we'll, we'll know a lot more. And it's definitely on the uh, agenda of, of the Fire Commission to right. uh, make sure this happens. Anybody move, have any questions? I move to approve $30,000 from the 
leftover salary and wages of the 2015 wait 2014 budget the anticipated surplus in 2015. The anticipated surplus all right in 2015 budget uh for the remainder of 2000 to last to the remainder of 2015 and then to be revisited for next year okay is there a second second any other discussion on it again we last year we hired a new full-time fire chief which was new to us and the fire chief was supposed to do the fire chief plus the inspections and then we had the this year we had the administrative assistant go from half time to full time. Full time. We also added that, but we also took the uh, compliance issues out of that and moved it to the police department. So <clears throat> we're kind of trying to get a handle on that. So we should be, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have that squared around. So anybody have any questions? This is just for this year? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, Mr. Zuli, we have a discussion about the uh, Hudson Softball Association and reducing from eight to six percent the uh, amount paid to the uh, city, which is about seven hundred bucks a year. At six percent, it will be about five hundred dollars a year. Versus, it was seven hundred and eighty dollars. I don't. Is Neil still here? Do you have that sheet? Yes. But then I'll let you talk. <laughs> Well, what we received last year was, I think, $810. Okay. And that was at 8%, correct? That was at 8%, so at 6% would be $600, roughly. If everything stayed the same. Correct. Okay. Is there any other group that has a concession agreement besides the Hudson Softball Association? Yes, we have the <coughs> Trent Park concession agreement. I believe, don't we, Tom? Was that 10%? The or bathhouse parking or bathhouse lakefront uh, bathhouse concession stand, um, we charge 5% plus they pay a fee toward electricity. But that does not, they don't have any liquor sales or anything down there. So they pay 5% plus some electricity and no liquor sales. How did we determine the original percentage? The 10%? Yeah. 21 years ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I should have brought the microphone so the people know it's in the... Uh... Just kind of curious how this evolved. <laughs> it's a number, right? It seems kind of arbitrary. Go yeah. <laughs> well, back. No, this is... My name is Bill Coates, Hudson Softball Commissioner. Uh, we're going on our 21st season up there at the ballpark. Back, let's go 20 years ago, when we were getting this concession agreement going... We haggled back and forth for quite some time also about the parks and everything else. And at that time, seeing how the Hudson Softball Association had the liquor permit to sell beer up there, the city, you would agree that we'd give them 10% of beer sales. Then over the course of time, um, as the teams dwindled down a little bit and their sales dwindled down a little bit, we decided to go with 8% of total sales, which is, includes your water pop, chips, candy, the whole nine yards. So now, getting back to the subject we had here last week was the same thing about now our teams have really dwindled down to the point where we're trying to keep this league functional and feasible and financially active for everybody to play. And that's why we asked for the 6% compared to the 8% that we're having now. Granted, it's only a few hundred dollars, we all understand that, but we're the only organization in town, like I mentioned earlier, that does pay to play. You know, the boosters go up there, they don't pay to play, they have concessions, uh, they have tournaments up there, nothing comes out of their pocket to the city when they have their tournaments. Ours is based on liquor, but we turn it all over to total concessions. Okay, questions? What's the participation rate now compared to what it was five years ago? Well, five years ago we were at um, five years ago we were playing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. This year we're going to be playing. Right now I'm going to be playing Sunday, and I'm, if the teams that we have now, we're going to try to combine the two our Wednesday doubleheader league and our Thursday night league because our women fell down. We got five or six committed teams now, so we're going to probably use the field Thursday night. Fields number one and four. Sunday night, we're going to use fields number one, four, and two. And Monday night, we're going to use field number, right now, probably just one, depending on how many commitments we get. So we're way down in teams. 
which goes to respect that we're going to be way down in concessions. So when you talk last year's fees to this year's fees, you know, I mean, it's, it's not as drastic as one thinks by if you talk percent. It's just, it's just not. But we're just it, trying to keep our fees well, low. Is it nationwide that softball is going down, or is it just Yeah, that? nationwide softball is going down. Uh, we've been in contact with the city of River Falls, trying to even discuss even combining our leagues. But they run a little different operation. Yeah. I've been in contact with New Richmond last year discussing it, and they, they, they got a really good league up in New Richmond because that's city run, and all the finances from that park that's generated go right back into that park. So they actually got a pretty good deal up there, and they've been doing theirs for just as long as we have, if not longer. Okay. Anybody have any questions, comments? How many teams did you have last year, Bill? Last year we had, I'm guessing, 31, 33. I have to go back to my records. And you've got up to 26 this year? Yeah, this year, Sunday nights per stays pretty well the same. Monday's going down from 10. Right now I got five committed. Uh, Wednesday went from six. I got three committed. We're working with River Falls right now to try to get four of their teams, and we're trying to get one more team of Hudson, so we'll have eight on Wednesday. And uh, right now on Thursday night women's, they went from uh, nine last year. Now we've got, I believe, five committed right now. And I just can't stress enough that we don't, I mean, we're not, we're not, we're already not keeping up with the bills. So okay. we, if we're going to subsidize a private, a private entity with our public soft, with public parks, we're just getting into a messy mess mess. So I'm just, I said it in finance. I'm not going to repeat myself. It's probably a loss argument. I'm pretty sure it's going to be, but. I well, stand I my ground that we don't subsidize <coughs> public, okay. no private I'll, organizations. I'll move to approve the 6% concession agreement. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. It, it seems to me like uh, if, we, if, if this team, fold, if, the, if the league folds, which is you know, one of the possible what we're trying to avoid here, then what happens to the fields? Are there, and are there people standing in line to use these fields? Are we preventing other people from playing? I guess that's that's one of the things we need to look I'm at. I'm sure there's plenty of people that can play. The boosters always are looking for fields. Yeah, but it sounds like we've got open fields that are You will have available. open fields. Are we going to subsidize the field of greens? We're not this, but, you know, there's other uses for the park also. Yeah. I mean, there can be other things that we utilize there, so it doesn't have sure. to be used as fields long term. They're all developed. They're good, and I'm not advocating, so don't. Anybody think that that's what I'm trying to say? I okay. touched that. So it's it's maybe the yeah. virtuality. Yeah. Are we going to subsidize the field of dream? Lacrosse is looking for places to play. There's no place yep. for lacrosse to play. They've been begging for areas to play. Yep. You know, are we going to are we going to subsidize the hockey association? I'm just saying we're get ready for it because this is what we we seem to do this to ourselves every time. We're, we're, there's these are the only folks that are paying concession fees. They choose that they don't have to have a concession. Yes, we do. No, you don't. We, if we could get this participation by, like, the River Falls Council participates and the Richmond Council participates, our fees would be down at the 350 range, so we would not need the concessions. River Falls does not have a concession, but they pay for the only thing that we have, they have to pay for there is the field usage. The lights and everything else combined, River Falls pays for. Yep. And the Richmond is all self-contained. All, it's all through the system. Okay. So you use the concessions to help offset the, your offset yeah. your Correct. Cost. So we try yeah. to keep our sales our profits. We don't have much profit. We try to keep our sales go back into our league fees so our prices because like I say right now, last year we went to and we had to raise our fees this year a hundred dollar minimum on every team just to get back in the game. We last year we lowered them drastically to try to draw teams. Well, that kind of backfired on us. We had a bad year last year because we had an awful lot of rainouts and whatnot. So, it, you know, we were scheduling all our games as best we can. We're starting our Sunday night league at 5:30 now, instead of 6:30, so we don't utilize the lights. Uh, we're trying to see how our other teams schedule, out so we don't utilize the lights. So we just got field usage, field prep, and concessions. You know. Okay. So, now, so, every... so we think it's fair as, to, as a taxpayer. We think it's fair to ask taxpayers, me being one myself, 
to help subsidize the softball league association for people to come in and play, whether they're from St. Paul, River Falls, wherever else they're coming from, we think that's fair. We do the same thing in Lakefront Park, Mary. Yeah, when, we, uh, when we subsidize a uh, event for a <laughs> nonprofit to use our park, and we don't collect enough fees to cover that. It's a public event, though. When, when have we ever subsidized anybody a private can, event? Anybody can go and join the softball association if they jo get a team, correct? If and then they should I'll be pay willing for to it. have anybody come up with a ball <laughs> team. They can tell me what night they want to play. We'll sign them up. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I, I think... Go ahead. Everybody Jim. that plays there, the, the boosters and, and, and whoever else, they pay for the fields. Is that right? I don't think the boosters... Uh, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, they there's do. fees, so fees for life. Yeah. Paying, everybody's yeah. paying the same Everyone's paying. To, so but we don't subsidize them. They're, oh. they're not. They have. They aren't running any concessions. They don't. Concessions is not a ma mandatory thing. So we're gonna. Okay. So because. But why are we charging them for running having concessions to make money? Because yeah, of electricity. Because of, we're not covering electricity. We're not covering. We we put in uh, in ground sprinkler systems. We haven't covered those costs yet. We, That's we, not for. We did. Yes, we they, it was by their request that they got put in. It wasn't for the city of Hudson residents to go use the ball fields. And I assume we thought it was a good idea for I, them. I didn't. I voted no on that, too, if I recall. So. I, I, I really find it hard to believe that, that this was just for these guys. I'm, I'm not going to buy that. Okay. So It was specifically they, they, requested they, they by that smart, organization. There were so. smart people that said, you know, these fields would be a lot better. And we looked at it and said, yeah, we agree. It'd so be the a, rest of our city parks class. stuff is just down the tubes. I, I, there's an agreement that uh, they would duplicate the, the facility we had up where Randy Eikens is now. And the concession stand was pretty elaborate there. And, uh, well, the concession stand at the old Hilltop Park was basically a shell building. And at that particular time, all the leagues were allowed to bring their own beverage of choice in and coolers. And we'd have a year-end tournament like we have now that they were not allowed to bring beverages in. Tom, how much cleanup do we do after each game? After, after, after each use of the park, how much added cleanup are we doing from cigarette butts and whatever else gets tossed on the field, around the fields that we don't charge for because, but we just go through as extra maintenance? I would say there, there would be some, um, but in the uh, agreement that the people running the concession stand are supposed to clean the concession stand and clean up the area and em empty some trash cans in the vicinity of the concession stand. That's part of their agreement. Mm -hmm. um, they're supposed to clean the uh, dugouts and get debris and things out of there also. How's that going? Uh, it could use some improvement. That's a nice way of putting it, thanks. Say, so, Tom, before you leave, Tom. Yes, sir. Uh, I th you know, I have a recollection that we talked about the electricity use and monitoring it somehow at the park. Yes, sir. Park. Um, I think there's a way, like um, down at the bathhouse, we have a, a meter hooked up to the um, uh, outlets for the concession stand. Uh, the catch up at the Grandview Park is that um, other people use, if we would do that and hook it up to the outlets, uh, I think boosters, I, if you can correct me, I think they hook up pitching machines to the outside outlets, I believe sometimes. Uh, there's times when other teams or the girls softball team actually hook up roasters and they do sell hot dogs and things outside the concession stand. So it would be tough, I think, to hook We're up. We're not taxing them. <laughs> uh, Maybe so there's other people that. that actually use the other outlets, so that's, that could Come get on. kind of interesting. Costs more to measure it than we're talking I guess about. I'm so, having an issue. I do not see taxes as a subsidy. I, I think we're, we're talking about taxing at 8% versus 6%. We were at 10%, but a tax is not a subsidy. They're actually paying a fee to conduct their business to help offset their own costs, but we're not giving them that money. We're, we're taking money from them based on their use, and they already pay the other fees, the electric and the field maintenance, and right, but you're already paying. That's the point. Well, I don't you think, know, but I didn't know parks expensive. were profit centers. I guess oh, uh, parks well, are, you know. And now right? apparently there's 
outside <clears throat> sales going with hot dogs and stuff <laughs> and that what could be used at the concession stand. I just, none of this, this whole thing boggles my mind. I, I see this as an opportunity to continue to work with the Softball yeah. Association for a, a program that's been going on for a very long time. So, Any other discussion? Yeah, yeah I, I, I only have a comment to make. Okay. You know, we've gone through the budgetary process with the Public Works Department, the Fire Department, the Police Department, the Administration, and we sit here and we're tough on those people and say, look, you're not going to get any more money and you're going to have to live with what you have. This is the way it is. This is the money we've got available to you, and you live with it. And I don't see this as much different than that, yep. okay? I, this is an organization that, that is trying to provide, you know, a service to people, and I grant you that, and that's okay, but all of the other departments in the city do the same thing, and we sit here and we're just tougher than hell on them. And I don't understand why we're going to be any different with this organization than we are with our own departments within the city. So I see that as a conflict. I, 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 our, our department heads have come here and pleaded for stuff, and we've cut them out and cut them out and cut them out. We've taken people out of the budget. And, and when we're doing that, I have a real problem with taking a different approach to a private organization. So that's my comment. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Okay. All right, any other comments or questions? I just want to say that Softball Association does a great job, and I support you. I, well, I it's not that we don't support the softball association or anything. <laughs> well, that's a little. Means, that's a little. Support means what was pretty bad dig yeah. for okay. trying to have a basic principle here of All right. Dollars. Any other discussion? It's just an open checkbook. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 Where are we at here? Why don't we uh, in favor? Aye. Raise your hand, please. Three. Opposed? Three. I'll I'll vote yes. Motion carries. Okay, moving on. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank yep. you. All right. Next item is discussion and possible action on ordinance two. two de Did I skip something? I think it was contingent. It was on the consent agenda, correct? No, no it's we removed it. Now it's been approved. Okay. Now we go to the liquor license. <laughs> is our motion to approve the liquor license? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Are they going to have beer sold on the side, too? Just curious. Is there any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we can move on to discussion, possible action, on ordinance 2-15, Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. Do we have the ordinance? I think everybody got it. Um, questions? Comments? Is there a motion to approve so that we can talk? I'll move. About Second. Have we had a first reading? If not, no, we'll I, just the rule. Yeah. at the last meeting, there was oh, a yeah. motion Sorry. to uh, prepare yep. the ordinance. Uh, yep. 3-3 okay. three, three vote. The mayor broke the vote to uh, go ahead and prepare the ordinance. Now the ordinance is up for consideration. This would be potentially first reading. Okay. We can have a first reading or we can suspend the rules. Uh, your preference. Move to suspend, so to suspend the rules. Is there a second? Second. Have to have a roll call vote on that, correct? Yep. Roll call, please. Weber? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Morissette? Yes. Yakubrad? No. Vanslow? No. Haggett? Yes. Okay, 4 2, it passes, so we've suspended the rules. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion. Mr. Darnold, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, but basically, the uh, ordinance that's before the Common Council was prepared by the City Attorney and myself following discussion at uh, the last time this was on the agenda. Okay. Is there anyone that wants to uh, speak to this? Mr. Weber, you had something from Citizen. Uh, yeah, I have a uh, citizen. letter from uh, our bike shop owner, Art. He um, said, I'm unable to attend tonight, but I am confident that the many Hudson residents and visitors who talk to me day after day about the need and desire for a safer, safer bicycling infrastructure for riding to school, work, and pleasure would all concur that having a committee in place to initialize a conversation and hopefully action would be what they would all like. This, inf inf this infrastructure is also conducive to more walking, but for that use I can't personally testify. Many, many cities have bicycle-related committees, and many of my customers who are new to the town are bewildered by the lack of trails and no plan towards potentially adding them. I just assume that cities, due to their past experience, 
actively manage cycling access. Naturally, the environmental benefits as well as the health benefits of more people cycling would also be reasons to have a committee for investigating the potential for more walking and cycling infrastructure. Thank you. Art Doyle. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Did we have this as a, a year trial basis or was this no, a it permanent? Was, uh, it says in the it, uh, ordinance no more than two years two shall years. review the ordinance in yeah. two years. I think that was right. I think that was the recommendation yep. from council. That's correct. Mary? I'm just going to stick by what I said last time. I think this is just expansion of government that's unnecessary. Plan Commission can handle this. Parks Department can handle this. Public Works can handle this like we handle sidewalks. We have enough departments to handle this exact same thing. It's just another passage for a committee to open up, to just keep opening up the checkbook. Okay. So I'm just tired of it. Any other comments or questions? It strikes me as special interest, and I agree with Mary that it is an expansion of government that's not needed, and uh, I don't see the value in it. Okay. Well, I'd have to say the evidence is that we, and if you look at the number of amount of trails that we have and, and the safety issues and ride your bike around here that the city has not handled that we don't have a plan to move forward on creating safe walking riding structure and we need that okay I disagree with that I live on a trail and I noticed uh, in the, since we talked about this that probably 70 percent of the people riding bicycles are families that in, at least in Hudson which is impressive, and uh, we have an exceptional amount of people walking as well. And I, uh, I see this as a great way to focus our attention and uh, gather resources. Um, once the county plan goes into place, there are statewide resources that are going to help us be allocated through this type of infrastructure. So I think it's a good thing. So I guess my question is, if that's all in play, why do we need a separate committee to approve it? Why wouldn't it go through plan commission like we do with the rest of the city? I'm not sure what would go through, who would, someone would have to bring it there. Yeah. And I don't see the plan commission as having the time or the resources to do that. This is a group that's gonna be able to focus on it. So we, we understand the needs, we're, we represent the people, we can, we can identify the issues, and nice. we, can, we can help pull that together. But the, uh, the, the plan that the county has in play really hinges on each locality having their own uh, trails and recreation plan so that would dovetail they came very very close to losing their funding just a couple weeks ago and it's still touch and go as to whether they're going to get it now so it uh, they were actually got notice that they were pushed off to 2017 they've been jumping through hoops and they may get that back this year so uh, uh, we're we need to support this we need to be working the, same as St. Joe and uh, uh, the, all the other organizations around us who are trying to put together a plan to have an adequate ec network. It has economic benefits, huge economic benefits. It has health benefits. It has safety benefits. The uh, bicycle unit, overall traffic accidents, car to vehicle to vehicle are down, but pedestrian and bicycle accidents are up. So you, we have more people riding, but the we need to create a safer environment and it's not just just creating trails it's creating awareness of of what safe bicycling is training people training riders training training uh, pedestrians training kids training doing it in driver's ed so there's a, there's a lot of things that can be brought to bear and this group can be helpful in pulling that information together and, and bring it to bear without a cost to the city just a resource. Okay. Who would this group may be made up of again? It's, it's going to be appointed by the mayor. If you look at that, it'll be mm -hmm. one council person and people, citizens that uh, appointed uh, in April for a two year period, term mm -hmm. staggered. More than three members are appointed each year. And it is strictly recommending. It still Correct. goes to the planning commission, yeah. public works, public safety. So it still has to go through that process. I envision it's similar to our tree board as well. And I Absolutely. Think, and I think, it, I think that's been a really good addition to uh, what we do in our community. It's really helped our park board and our public works out. So, all right, uh, still time for comments or thoughts. Anybody that wants to give their, uh, I'll say more than two cents worth. 
if it doesn't work out in two years, people can revisit it. <coughs> Opponents then will, if they didn't, if it didn't fulfill what people said it would, yep. some future body can handle it, address it then. I, I would just say the, the tree, the forestry <coughs> committee, is something for all of the city of Hudson residents, all of the city of Hudson residents benefit from that. A bicycle committee benefits people who bicycle. So there is a difference in my mind between those committees. So I don't see those as equal. The figures are roughly 80% of the people, st people in the state of Wisconsin walk for recreation and 45 to 55%, depending on which survey you look at, bicycle for recreation. And, and we have committees already that address those issues in the city. No, I don't, well, I, we do, but I don't think they've had the resources. How did we get sidewalks? The, excuse me. How, how did we get sidewalks? Excuse me. I'll well, excuse you, but how do we get sidewalks? We have sidewalks. Oh, well, where did they come from? Because we didn't address they, they walking? Because we didn't address I'm walking? I'm saying but you have to go beyond that. Okay. All right. I'm not sure we're making any progress. Uh, trying to convince each other uh, feeling a different way. It doesn't matter how you, you, know, you have your right to your opinion. So uh, I think unless somebody wants to add something else, we'll, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, no. Opposed? No. No. Motion carries. Thank you. And if you know of anyone that wants to be on that or if you know someone that would like to be on this committee, let me know so that I can make recommendations to you folks. And we'll try and do that in April. <clears throat> Uh, next item on the agenda is discussion possible action on resolution 215 notice of hearing and resolution of vacant part of 2nd Street south of Cooley Road. Mr. Darnold. This uh, resolution, resolution 2-15 uh, simply introduces uh, the resolution uh, to get it in the uh, state required process for consideration of a vacation of a public street. The area that's uh, being suggested for Street vacations, part of uh, Second Street, East of State Trunk Highway 35, and south of Cooley Road, and generally south of the Dairy Queen, between the Dairy Queen and the Mutual Northwest Mutual Office Building. Again, uh, the resolution calls for a public hearing on the 18th of May. Unfortunately, because the meeting was moved from last Monday to this Monday, and we're, because we're required to have a 40-day uh, process bef by time it's introduced to the timing schedule of the public hearing. Unfortunately, we had moved the consideration back two weeks uh, by the Common Council. Um, again, this does not um, require that the city vacate the area. It just sets up the public hearing. The Planning Commission was favorable of uh, the public hearing, what this uh, street vacancy uh, would uh, achieve is allowing more development area on the south side of Cooley Road on the east side uh, for potential redevelopment of the area that was just recently uh, cleaned up uh, uh, by uh, uh, the owners of uh, the, uh, by MLME Holdings. And so I'm recommending that we go through the process and introduce the resolution 2-15 tonight. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? <coughs> <clears throat> discussion uh, it really looks nice down there Mike it, you've done a nice job of cleaning that up yeah. I agree any other discussion on this I'll just make one last comment yep. I did I have had discussions with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation uh, they haven't you know they'll participate as far as commenting however I did get a general understanding of that you know we're only vacating the minimum amount of area that we possibly can. What we're trying to achieve with the DOT is to have three northbound lanes. One to be this up and turn left on to, to Buckeye. The second would be straight ahead. And the third will be right turn on to Cooley. But, but we're saving enough area that you'll be able to, have, to extend that right turn lane all the way down to the entrance into the mutual, uh, Northwest Mutual building. Plus, have an eight-foot boulevard area for snow storage, plus have a five-foot sidewalk. So huh. our intent is not to uh, take any more than we absolutely have to. If, again, uh, we can go through the process and vacate that area. Thanks. That's a good clarification about what we're trying to do there. Yeah. Discussion? Comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda is discussion and possible action on resolution 1-15, government responsibility uh, resolution for runoff management grants. Tom, are you gonna carry this or is, um, this is part of our MS4 general permit. Correct, Tom? Yep. Um, as the first step of applying for a DNR um, stormwater grant is to get a, a resolution so we can uh, put the application in, which is due, I think, like mid-April in a couple weeks. Uh, this grant would allow us to get some funding up to $85,000 for um, items that are required through the MS4, so modeling, planning, um, studies like that. So uh, this is just the first step in acquiring uh, or applying for uh, MS4, uh, one of the stormwater grants. Tom, who's, uh, who's running with this? Is this you? Are you the lucky person that has to run with the MS4? It's on our, yes, it's in public works, yes. <coughs> Is Tom Sipko able to assist? At Absolutely, he he did a big a lot of part a lot of this, and uh, we do have some money already allocated toward SEH assisting with some of this um, because of some of the requirements by the state for us to yes. do the plans and those kinds of things. Yep. This is a requirement that uh, is it. This is our first year or second year? Uh, or this is our first year this yeah. year. So, there's so th these are not optional. We have to do these things, and it's going to cost us quite a few dollars to get the, even our street sweeping and all the those kinds of things. They, yeah, they monitor street sweeping. We have to do some testing. A lot of it's uh, public outreach <laughs> and public information. Um, we'd like to actually get a, you know, we're going to try to get our uh, stormwater inventory so we can get a handle on all our structures, storm ponds, and see where we're at. Um, and put that all in a GIS system and modeling system. So, I think this would be a good topic. I think for everybody uh, at one of our council meetings, because I'm not sure everyone's aware of all the stuff that are the things that we have to accomplish uh, within the next year and a half. We have to do a report in two years. So yep. hopefully we'll have things going. So a year and a half. <laughs> Okay. Well, this is just the first step in getting, uh, trying to get some money to help us do some of the planning and modeling. Is there a motion to approve? We yes. suspend the rules. Yeah. Oh. Move to suspend the rules. With Second. Okay. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Weber? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Yakub Rod? Yes. Vanslow? Yes. Now. Move to approve resolution 1 15. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion, opposed? Motion carries. Uh, thank you. Uh, any items for future agenda? Council members. Uh, communication, uh, city attorney. Nope. City staff, anything? No? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned, thank you. <laughs>